Here we go. We're live. Okay, we're back, folks. We're going to see if this works. Uh, my phone wasn't doing what it was supposed to. So we're um, believing that this time, in the name of Jesus, that we will not have connection failure, that this is going to be great and awesome. Um, we just praise the Lord right now for people being healed and made whole. If there is anything um, in your family, such as um, financial issues that you want prayer for, we're going to pray for those financial issues. We want to make sure that you get those financial issues uh, rectified and taken care of in the name of Jesus. Uh, we really are concerned in care. Sometimes you feel like that things are going a certain way with your finances or in your life, especially with relationships, and that maybe no one cares or no one um, understands. But we just praise God that Jesus understands, and he has asked us just to help to support you. If you want prayer, put your prayer request in here. I apologize for the other live feed that went down, um, but we did pray for a uh, few people, and so now we would just um, enjoy praying for you. Oh, hi, Miss Stephanie. Hey there. So, and it may not always be for you. You could have a prayer request, whether it be finances, or jobs, perhaps it's relationships, restoration of marriages. Ah, Mr. John, you need a job. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, the video is good now, Marion. Thank you so much. I'm, I apologize. Hey there, Pastor Robert. I apologize for the feed issues earlier. Miss Shantae is here. And then we also have, let me introduce everybody to you. This is Miss Brittany Cop, amazing woman who loves Jesus. And she is how many weeks pregnant? I'll be 13 tomorrow. 13 weeks pregnant. Yay, awesome. No With her second child. No complications in Jesus' name. And then this is her husband, Jonathan. Hey right. there, Jonathan Cop. How awesome you are. A mighty man of God who loves his wife. This is a couple who prays together. So Mommy. guess what? They stay together. And this is one of their babies. Hey, Xander. <laughs> and Gavin. Gavin. Awesome. We can't forget about you. Come on, Gavin. Let's see your awesome face. Stop. He's a teenager. We're not going to have that, Gavin. I love you, honey. We're not doing that. Okay. So, I apologize for that, teenagers. Love them. Absolutely love them. So, we're praying right now for Mr. John for your job. Does anyone in the group feel led particularly to pray for his job? Amen. You want to, John? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, John. You go ahead, honey. Go ahead. John Kaplan, his job. Hey, he needs a doing? job. <laughs> how you doing? Lord, we come to you for uh, John. Yes. Uh, yes, Lord. And also myself, uh, I pray that you help him I'm find sorry. a job. Uh, in today's world, it's hard to find a job. Uh, but we know if we stick to you, you will lead us in the right direction. Help us follow your lead our feet to where you want us to be. Amen. And, uh, Won't be hard for him to find a job. Hallelujah. Yes. And I just lift My John team. up to you. Yes. Uh, and we help him follow you to the right job. Oh. We know it won't be long if he stays on the path that you have laid out for him. Yes, in Lord. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. Yes, Lord. We just know that these doorways are open. These doors yes. are open in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Any Jesus. doors that were closed to you, we plead the blood of Jesus right over them. If that is yes. your door, we command it to open now. Yeah. You will have what God has purposed for you to have. If there is a delay or an issue or a problem preventing those doors from opening, yes. then we do mm -hmm. command those um, issues to be bound up. But also for God to... Um, Reveal to you anything that might be hindering it in the natural that you yourself can do to rectify this situation. But if it's not something on your end, God will let you know. And that supernaturally, there is a high amount of favor. This is 2017. Yes. This is the year 2017 where awesome favor is landing on people. Yes. Favor like you cannot even imagine is landing on people. And also for Cortez, the school debt. And we're going to pray again for that school debt because yes. when we prayed earlier, the feed was freezing up. I hope the yes. feed is still good now. And so, Miss um, Shantae, do you feel led to pray for yes. that school debt? 
Lord, we thank you, Lord, for yes, Cortez, Lord. God. God, yes, I Lord. pray, Lord, that um, yes, Lord. you would give him wisdom on what he needs to do, God, yes, in God. regards to the school debt, Lord. Yes, we know, Lord, that you are able, God, to miraculously cancel the debt, God. Lord, we thank yes. and we praise you, God. We yes. speak to Cortez, God. I yes. thank and I praise you, Lord, for him being a man after thank your you, heart, God. Lord, I thank and I praise you, Lord, for anointing him, God, for perfecting yes. God that which concerns him, Lord. Lord, we thank and we praise you thank for you, open Jesus. doors, God, in his schooling, Lord. I just thank and I praise you for giving him favor with yes, God Lord. and man, Lord. Thank yes. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. I'm going to look back through the feed here some. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Continued healing for Karen. Thank you, Lord. Karen, did you want to elaborate on what you needed more healing for? You don't have to. If you want to elaborate on that, you can. If you want to tell us more. If not, then we are just speaking right now yes, Lord. to your body for health, wholeness, and healing. Yes, Lord. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. The blood of Jesus yes, Lord. canceled the curse. Your sins are forgiven. His body was beaten, battered, bruised. He was, um, you know, spit on. He was absolutely humiliated and injured so that we don't have to be. So we command your body to line up with that healing. You got that healing more than 2,000 years ago when Jesus, not only did he die on the cross for you, but he rose again. Yes. So he has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Death is not your portion. Sickness is not your portion, Karen. We love you, but God loves you more. And so in the New Testament, it says you were healed. So yes. in the past, if you were healed, you're still healed. Amen. The pain, the issue, whatever it is, it's a lie. It yes. is lying. And so, God, we just thank you right now yes, Lord. for health, wholeness, and healing. And Miss Edna, those knees. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hmm? What is it? Yes, I'm writing them down. Did you want to do that for me? Go ahead, Gavin. You can write that down for us. That would be very helpful. So, Gavin, he's awesome. He's volunteered to write these prayer requests down. So, um, do one of you feel led to pray for the knees of Miss Edna? I'll pray Edna. for her knees again. Okay. Amen. <clears throat> Father God, I ask for your uh, supernatural healing. You are the physicians of all physicians. And we pray that you lay your hands on Edna and her knees. And yes. bring them back to better um, condition, if not normal. Yes. Um, I pray for whole healing. Yes. And I pay, I pray for uh, knee strength to be yes. regained. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. All functions restored. Yes. A yes, done Lord. work in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Totally Jesus. restored. And we just thank you right now, Lord God. If you under, if you see, wonder what my hand was doing, I'm trying to r scroll up on the news feeds to see if we... Um, I don't want to leave out anyone's prayer request. And we're just, we agree. Everyone on here, I just thank you so much for agreeing. Oh, good. Agreeing with us that these things are met. New jobs, health, wholeness, and healing in the bodies. Yes. Now, is there anyone on here who needs a restoration of relationships? It might be your marriage. It might be the marriage of a relative of yours or even a friend. Thank you, Miss J.D. Amen. Hey there. Hey there, J.D. Oh. Hey, Mrs. J.D. Oh, Xander says, hello, Miss J.D. <laughs> He's so cute. Oh. So we just uh, appreciate y'all giving us the opportunity to pray for you. It has just been a pure joy. Yes. And you're welcome to leave other prayer requests. If you decide to get on here later, it will be monitored, and we're going to look at it to make sure that Whatever request you have is prayed for. And we just thank God for the awesome privilege of just people feeling like um, you can trust us to pray over the needs that you have. Because that is an awesome privilege to be to know that you, when you reach out to somebody, they're actually praying. They're actually agreeing according to scripture. Um, a lot of times I haven't quoted 
uh, scripture chapter and verse. But um, the, what we are praying is, a lot of it is praying back a scripture to the Lord, bringing back to his remembrance what it says in the book of this or, you know, Romans chapter 8 specifically tells us that the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the grave lives inside of us. Yes. He lives in us. Amen. So we, um, and it says in that same chapter, it's either maybe verse 13 or 15. I haven't been so great on memorizing that. But Romans chapter 8 tells us it, he gives life to our mortal flesh. And so when I, I remember when the first time I read that, something clicked and dawned on me. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. He, he actually, the spirit of God touches our flesh. He gives life to our mortal flesh. Well, how does he do that? It's oftentimes, I'm sure, Miss Shantae, you've heard this, about yes. how the body prospers according to how our soul prospers. Yes. Psalm 32. Yes. Amen. Yes. Um, and now I have a personal testimony, but did you have any kind of testimony? Oh, left shoulder. Healing yes. for left shoulder for Miss J.D. Miss J.D., we are praying right now for your left shoulder. We all agree, touch and agree right now sure. that that Miss J.D., that her shoulder is healed. Oh, oh wow. Sure. And Mr. John, you also need prayer for your shoulder. The same left shoulder. Wow. And prophetically, this is going to sound rather interesting, and I'm not saying it's related to that, but what just now came to my mind was that the left side of the body is often related. Um, when we have dreams or visions, and the left side of our body is the focus. Oftentimes, it can be meaning that whatever the issue is is related to our family. Our actual physical, you know, family, whoever's our family is. And so, um, if there are any issues related to just stress, um, related with family, <coughs> we command cartilage yes, and bones and joints Jesus. and inflammation to go and things to be aligned inside of there. Yes. Uh, regrowth. If there is a missing cartilage, we command there to be a regrowth. Yes, if yes. any type of ligaments have pulled away, we command them to go back and to be sutured supernaturally to where they need to be. Yes. Did you have anything to add Amen. to that? Thank you. Just in agreement with you, John. And yes. Miss J.D. Yes. Did you have anything to add? Uh, not particularly to them. Okay. But it's just something that just kind of, I guess, just started to lay on my heart. Um, a few weeks ago, there was a 12-year-old who committed suicide. Okay. And, um, first of all, I feel like we need to pray for her family. Okay. And we need to pray for any lost souls out there who are... Wanting to end their lives. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Absolutely. Hi, Michelle. Hey there, Miss Michelle. So, would you like to pray for her then, since you're thinking it so heavily yeah. on her? Go ahead. Um, God, I just want you to lay your hands on, uh, Caitlin's family, um, the little girl who tragically um, ended her life live on Facebook. Um, I pray for her mom um, and her father, if he is involved. I pray for her entire family. Um, the loss of a child. A parent should never have to bury their child, Father God. That's not your purpose. That's not what you intended. Um, I pray that you lead all of them to you. Well, draw them close to you and show them that um, you're here. If there's anybody out there who is contemplating ending their life, just show them that you're here, right. that you've never left, yes, that yes. you're the only That's thing right. that matters, um, that life is greater. Yes. Especially with you. Yes. <laughs> That's it. That's, thank you so much, Brittany. Thank you. And so we bind up. We right just bind now, up the spirit of suicide, yes, depression. Right we bind now, these things <laughs> up. We call them null and void in, the in their lives. Whatever doorways people have opened in their own lives that has given the enemy access to cause them to have depression yes. mm -hmm. or suicidal thoughts. We repent for them right now, God. For any of those things, we we're we're commanded to stand on the wall for people. Yes. We're actually told in the Old Testament that if we see something coming and we don't warn the people, we're held accountable. Their blood is on our head, our their our hands. Um, we're also told that if 
we, you know, we are to stand on the wall. We are to see and to notice. And we have seen these things. If it affects our heart, then that means God wants us as believers to pray for people. How are the lost going to know him? He can't. And he does. God does reveal himself to the lost without any help from us. But he also likes us to join with him and work with him and be obedient and pray for people to draw and for the Holy Spirit to woo them. The loving kindness of God woos them. Yes. So we're just believing that whatever in generational lines and people that are wanting to end their lives, that they will come to themselves, so to speak. God will rip the blinders off of depression and despair. Those entities will be bound. Their assignments canceled in those people's lives in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There have been... Yes, amen. amen. Thank you so much, y'all coming into agreement with us on this. Thank you so much. Hi, Miss Pam. Hey, Miss Chantel. Okay, if you have a prayer request, you're welcome to give it. Now, did you have a testimony? On something that you wanted to speak about? Um, not that I can think of. Okay. At this particular time. I, I have a, you know, I love to talk, so. <laughs> I don't want to be the only person talking. Bless you too, Chantel. Bless you too. Hi, Hello. Kylie. Hey there. Hey there. Hi, Isha. Hey there. So, one of the things I did want to talk about. Aw. How sweet. Thank you for sharing. Um, was just, again, different things that God has done in my own personal life. Here's mm -hmm. one aspect. I can remember a time in my life. You know how we talk about we're running down the road? We're running down the road. Uh, it's a race that we're running. The Bible talks about. We're headed to the finish line. Some of you feel like or think. Because I've had people tell me this before. They think that I've got it all together or my life has always been perfect. Um, there are things that are happening in my life right now that don't look like the promise. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. So I believe they're going to be lined up. But there was a time, it was a few years before I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Do you know that in my race I sat down? Yes, I did. You know, when we're told to keep going and you know to keep going, why well, didn't keep going? And there are people out there right now where you sat down. And I want to tell you, it's not over. God doesn't hate yes. you. In his mercy, I remember the moment that I actually sat down. I was sitting in a rocking chair, same rocking chair I nursed, you know, the babies. I told you I was, you know, remembering the promises and God healed me of the rheumatoid arthritis. It's same rocking chair. So I was sitting in this rocking chair again, and it felt like a weight so heavy. Something so horrible was on me. And I felt like if I just pulled back out of the race, if I just went and sat down, Satan would leave me alone. Well, I can tell you this. I sat down and some of the weight did lift off of me. But the enemy came after me uh, even harder. He didn't stop pursuing me. He decided in that moment to try to kill and eradicate me. So I just want to tell you, though, that if you have sat down, there is forgiveness in the Lord and his mercy. He came back a few years later. He kept talking to me. And he wooed me and said, get up, daughter. Yes. Daughter of Zion, get up. Daughter, I love you. Get up. And I decided I would stand up again. And continue my race. And I have continued from then until now. And I will continue. By the grace and mercy of the Lord God Almighty. And in his strength. So if that has happened to you. Then I just want to tell you. That that's okay. God has forgiven you. All you have to do is just say. Oh, I'm going to stand back up. Because he's that merciful. And that graceful. And that just loving. He loves us. Yes. And if you ever sat down. You know what? God knew it. He knew it. He knew you'd do it before you did. He knew I was going to fail. You know, I was the type of perfectionist person. I was going to stand till I died. But I didn't at that time in my life. Okay? But God used that to teach me, you're not perfect and you're never going to be perfect. Amen. I am going, I am perfecting you. So that's what he taught me in that. Um, and then... Another thing was, if you have a prayer request, jump in here if you've got a prayer request. We would love to pray for you and help you shut any um, doors that the enemy might be trafficking or bind up any tormentors or something. Freezing I'm just problems. freezing problems. Okay. I hope you can hear me. Okay. Yeah. So I think we're back. 
Uh, one of the things is there was the time I remember being bit by the black widow spider. Mm -hmm. I was taken to the hospital. I was unconscious for 13 hours. The doctors came to me at that point and they said they didn't believe I was going to make it. He just said, honestly, I don't think you're going to make it. Um, your husband's over there and we don't think you're going to make it. <laughs> and I just remember going, whoa, wow. And this was like literally two or three days before Christmas, <laughs> the year that this happened. And I remember thinking, wow, God, can you do something? I know you can, but are you going to do something? Are my kids going to be without me at Christmas? And so... God ended up, because I had gone, they didn't realize what was wrong with me to begin with when I was taken to the hospital. And so they didn't know to give me the anti-venom. And since I had already gone so long, they were like, it's too late now. It would just be a waste. But God brought me back around again because here I am. So I just want to tell you, at the times when I drowned in a pool and God brought me back, stung by a yellow jacket and God brought me back, bit by a black widow spider god brought me yeah. around again when they kept saying you're not going to make it we don't think you're going to make it there were times in surgeries or after a surgery um the doctors were like you're not going to make it i made it i can remember another time my uterus ruptured with child number seven my uterus ruptured i lost four units of blood total and I don't know if that was all in that one moment or, you know, over the next day or two. I just know I, they told me you lost four units of blood. Okay. You only had a body my size only had four and a half units of blood. I had no vitals for over an hour. None. Yet I was conscious. I was talking. And I was trying to sit up when they got me to the hospital. The okay. ambulance ride that should have taken 20 minutes by car at normal pace took them an hour. Why? They thought I was dead. They didn't turn the lights on. They stopped at every red light, stopped at every stop sign. People who had been with me when my uterus ruptured made it to the hospital long before I did. And when the ambulance came in without its lights, guess what? They thought I was dead. They thought I had died on the drive, and that's what took them so long. Or perhaps they pulled over and were trying to do emergency procedures on me. But I get there, and I'm alive. And I remember the nurse, the doctor looked at her and said, prep her for surgery. Prep her for surgery. Mm. You survived a gas explosion. Wow. You made it. Yes, ma'am, Miss Stephanie. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. Well, the doctor told the nurse to prep me for surgery. She still couldn't get vitals. And she said, how on earth can I do that? I've never prepped anybody without vitals. How would I know what to give her? And so she's fumbling with these vials, and they're literally spilling on the floor because she had pulled a drawer open, and she's all like, because he has said, prep me, and she doesn't know how to do that. And I remember he said, I will tell you what to give her. He t pointed his finger at me and said, you will live and not die. Mm. And actually, I think he said, because he wasn't talking to me, he was talking to her, she will live and not die. But I received that as I will live and not die. Mm. That put such a peace on me. I found out later he was a spirit-filled Christian doctor, mm -hmm. a Holy Spirit-believing doctor. He somehow knew that I was going to live and not die. And I remember they put the gas mask on me. And it was um, they had said it was going to take approximately 30 minutes to prep me in the room, which I'm sure they probably did a little quicker than that, it being an emergency. So I, over an hour without vitals. And yet I lived. And I remember there were times I was like, I wish I hadn't lived. But God forgave me of that. Mm. So I'm telling you, when we goof up... <laughs> His mercy and His grace reaches further than our sin. If you have lost hope, if you have sinned, if you feel like you have, um, maybe you've done something which you feel is, uh, maybe you fornicated, maybe you did a sin of perversion, maybe uh, you did some type of other type of sin, and you just think it's unforgivable, whatever it is. I'm telling you, God's grace and mercy reaches farther then our sin can never take us in the depths of whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Because I have been in some really low places, Miss Shante. Amen. And I thought for sure that God either wouldn't forgive me or I wouldn't live. And yet, for whatever reason, by the mercy and grace of God, he, he just reached out to me and yes. pulled me up when I could not pull myself up. Amen. When I had that uterine rupture, the baby died. My son Nine pounds, five and a half ounces. Beautiful baby. 
I held him in my arms. And I know, you know, here is a mother and a soon-to-be mom again. And we just know that the resurrection life and protection of the Lord is covering her and her baby, yes. giving her peace, yes, Lord. and that this will be a wonderful pregnancy and delivery for you. The things that God has promised for you, they're going to happen. They're going to happen. They're going to happen for you and your family. Amen. Wherever Amen. God leads you both, wherever he leads y'all, you're going to be blessed and in favor with the Lord. Thank every God. step of the way, every step of the way, every step of the way, every step of the way. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a prayer request, anyone else have a prayer request? Thank y'all for coming into agreement with these prayers. And if Amen. you have a testimony you want to share of, you know, one of the ladies earlier, you mentioned how you had survived a gas explosion. And her heart stopped. Yeah, her heart stopped. And her heart stopped. But you're alive and your heart is beating in Jesus' name. And you know what? That is also something I had in common with you. They had said, the doctors told me I had heart damage after the uterine rupture. They got my heartbeat back down. I woke up after recovering. They had to do the C-section. And the baby, obviously, he, Nathaniel had passed. When I woke up, I looked over at the machine and thought to myself, what, what kind of machine is that? What is it? It can't be the heart rate. It said 255 plus. I mean, it was, I was like, what on earth? I had recently, because at that time, when you're pregnant in the last stages, you can't do much of anything. But <laughs> I had my feet up, looking at the TV, watching all these medical shows. And one of the things they'd had on there was that if a 250-pound man ended up with a heart rate of 250 plus, his heart would explode and he'd go into cardiac and it would explode and he'd die. And I remember thinking, What? That can't be my heart rate. And I asked the nurse, and she said, look, we don't know why you're alive. We don't know. That is your heart rate, and we don't know why you're alive. And the doctors had said that I was going to have this um, heart damage. Well, I'm telling you now, after one month, I came off those three heart meds. I weaned myself off of them. Now, I had a word from the Lord on that. I do not encourage you to go off medication unless you get a word from the Lord or your doctor about that. You don't ever do that. That could be dangerous for you. Don't just suddenly drop meds, you know, unless God himself told you to do such a thing. You don't do that. All right? <laughs> okay, people, I love you. Hear me on that. And then um, I went back to the heart doctor in three months, and he checked my heart, and he said, um, how much of the blood pressure pills have they still got you on? And I'm like, I'm not on any of that. He goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, what about this and this? No, I'm not on that either. What? What do you mean you stopped taking it? I said, well, do you see anything wrong with my heart? He's like, well, no. How long have you been off of it? And I told him. You know, most of it was like I'd been two months off the medication. It wasn't like a few days. <laughs> he was thinking I'd been off of it a few days, and he was going to get you right back on that med. And I said, oh, no, honey. I've been off of that. I weaned myself off of that because God said. They were shocked. They were very shocked. And now I have an awesome ticker. My heart is doing awesome. So if you've got any kind of a health issue, I'm telling you, God wants you healed. God does not want you to stand uh, for less than, less than perfect. Jesus' body is perfect, and the Word of God tells us that we are to be in health. That we have the same health as Jesus. He says, as Jesus is in heaven, so are we in this earth. And I'm telling you right now, Jesus yes. doesn't have a foul ticker. His heart is perfect. He doesn't have any kind of swollen knees. He doesn't have any type of uh, ligament, joint issues. His body is perfect. Now, I'm telling you, there are times when the enemy will come. And sometimes it's my own fault. I have to say at Christmas and Thanksgiving, I did not eat like my normal way. So what <laughs> happens with my body? Okay, what happened, y'all? What happened? I can tell you what happened. I started getting some aches and pains. I, my body didn't feel well, okay? When stuff like that happens, sometimes it's our fault. Now, as soon as I began to back off of all the sweets and sugars and began to eat more clean, okay, God does heal bodies, but he also wants us to use good, sound judgment and mind that he's given us that if we know, now if we don't know, 
Yeah, that's one thing. But if we know that if we eat 10 cupcakes a day, something mm -hmm. bad or negative is going to happen to our body, then he's not going to continue. If we know it, he's not going to continue to block those 10 cupcakes from having an effect on our body. Okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, now, I will tell you, please don't take mm -hmm. that to mean that if for some reason someone on here were to have lung cancer, that God won't heal you because you smoked for 25 years and you knew you shouldn't have. I'm telling you, I've heard of people who've gotten healed. They did it to themselves. God is merciful. He will reach down and heal you. Yeah. He will reach down. There were things that I did to my own self. Like, for instance, the rheumatoid arthritis, especially when he told me it was due to unforgiveness. I was 225 plus pounds. Honey, all that 225 plus pounds did not come from rheumatoid arthritis. Some of it did. Some of it was because I was sitting down on the couch, felt lethargic, and was, and I knew eating bonbons and watching TV was not the best thing in the world to do. But what did I do? Yeah. I ate ice cream. I was eating pie. I was eating cookies. I was eating chips. I was eating a bunch of meals. So some of it was my fault. Some of it was not the disease. Okay? No, man. No, Miss Stephanie, I most certainly am not calling you that. <laughs> I love you. No, we are not calling you that in any way, shape, or form. I no. love you. But I, I'm telling you, I was a big girl. <laughs> if you saw the pictures, I was 225 plus pounds. Oh, my gosh, and look what God has done for his glory. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm just, so I just say, have you ever looked at your life and said, Why me, God? Why would you show me mercy? Why would you care? Why would you care if I live and die? You're God. But God says he's love. But And because he's love, that love, Miss Shante, just yes. keeps on. Amen. Is there somebody else that wants to say something? Because I don't want to keep talking. I'm telling you, I can talk forever. So if y'all have something, a prayer request, relationship, you want to ask for restoration of marriages, does anybody feel specifically led here at the table to pray for restoration of marriages? Why are you scaring me out? Because <laughs> <laughs> you haven't been really participating. That's right, Gavin. He's our team here tonight. And he says, I've never been in a marriage, so I don't know how that is. <laughs> That's all right. That's honesty. Thank you so much. But did you want to pray for marriages? I've never been married. Oh, oh you <laughs> most certainly have you married right now. <laughs> Would you like to pray for marriages? Not really. Okay. Well, that's fine. Thank Would you, Miss Shante, want to pray for some marriages this evening? Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Mr. Lambert, thank you for saying that. We're going to come thank back you. to that. All right. Father God, we thank and we praise you, Lord. Yes, for Lord. Your perfect structure, God. The family is your perfect structure, God. We thank you, Lord, yes. for marriages, God. Lord, yes, we Lord. thank and we praise you, Lord, for the unions that you call together, Lord. Yes, Lord God. God, we speak restoration, God, to any marriage, yes. Lord, that... Um, any couples that may be facing a difficult time, Lord God, yes, we speak Lord. restoration in the name of Jesus, Lord. Yes. We thank and we praise you, Lord, you, for Lord rekindling God. the fire, Lord God. We thank yes. and we praise you for wisdom, God. Mm. God, give them wisdom on what they need yes. to do, God, to, to assist with the restoration, Lord God. We yes. thank and we praise you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Jesus. Yes, and Mr. Lambert, oh my goodness, I don't know if people can see what he's written here. You had passed many times before, and wow. Jesus brought you back every time. In 2011 and 2012, wow, you found that you had had a disease from overseas. It's not letting me see all of it. Oh, is it right there? Okay, thank you. From overseas... TB, the second person in 40 years to have it, mm. during that time, you had a visitation from Jesus and Michael, mm. the archangel, oh, and, and Gabriel, oh, wow. and oh, it wow. came from overseas, but you had never been overseas, wow, mm. wow, well, Mr. Lambert, You said had. We're believing that that disease is in the past. Amen. That it is not currently so. That is not your lot. That is not who God has called you to be. That you are healthy in your lungs yes. and in your body. Yes, yes. and we, we just... 
we bind up any doorways, any openings to your soul where the enemy had legal right. We plead the blood of Jesus over you. We speak to those doorways and we command that doors in your soul right now to be open to the King of glory. Oh, ancient doors, open to the King of glory that he may come in in the name of Jesus. May you be overwhelmed and in a wonderful way by the Holy Spirit right now. May you feel his presence like you have just never felt his presence before this evening. Breathing and health, restoration to, you know, when we breathe, it causes our limbs, our arms and our legs to function more appropriately. Our brain, our heart. Yes, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Yes, yes, yes. We believe, we believe. Let's see if there's anything if we missed. And Andrea, Andrea, we are praying right now that you're healed. Yes. We're agreeing you're healed in Jesus' name. Hi there. Hi, Miss Vicky. Whoops. Hi, Miss Vicky. Aw. Pastor Matt. Yes. Oh. Now, is there anyone else? Let me see if I can get these comments. If you see my finger touching the screen, that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get the comments to go up. I don't want to miss anyone's prayer request. Yes, Cortez, we did. We prayed yes. for that financial debt. And I'm so glad you didn't call it your debt. Amen. Truly, because um, you referred to it as school debt. Instead of my school debt. Because anytime we say me and mine, we're claiming it. That's basically giving it more power. I'm trying to remember when I first realized that. I think I was sitting across from someone. I was. I had gone to Fripp Island to a uh, women's retreat on Fripp Island. Just the most beautiful island, I can tell you that. Absolutely beautiful place to be. Um. And I was, uh, we were sitting at a table eating, and one of the other, I guess we had gone there. I had gone there um, as a armor bearer t to the main speaker, and the people that we were ministering to, one of the ladies called it my this, and this is mine, and my that, and my this, and out of me, it literally shot out of my mouth, don't claim it, don't call it me, mine, mine. It's not yours. Do you want to keep it? <laughs> and they literally received that and were like, no. Oh, my goodness. I had no clue I was doing that. So at that moment, it was really when it began to hit me. How many times had I done that? How many times have all of us done things like that? Yes. But, God, we're just so thankful. People, I am seeing so much love, grace, and mercy here. The times where we have just sinned. Even if we have not known what we were doing. I'm sure you've all felt that way. Amen. Now, Mr. Jonathan, you're sitting way over there. We can hear you. We'd love to see you. Get over here. Ah! They can't, they can't see, see your hand. Get they can't here. see your hand. <laughs> Yay, hey there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and let us know. Hey there. Yes. Oh, hey, Pastor Gerald. Hey there. If y'all have prayer requests, even if it's not your own prayer request, or if you have a testimony, we're building each other's faith up here this evening. We just love building the faith of other people and ourselves. It builds my faith a lot. Ah, shalom, shalom. Hello there. There were several people that left their prayer requests on Friday. So we just um, also, we just continue to speak to any of those that weren't manifested to manifest now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes. Have one from Gregory Ritter. Gregory Ritter. Okay, Gregory Ritter. We command the road to open up for you. We command the 
angels to go down the road, pathway, fire of God to advance forward in the name of Jesus and make a way for you. Make a way for you for God to tell you where to put your foot. Sometimes it's foot by foot, one foot in front of the other. Sometimes he might show you 30 years down the road. Sometimes he might tell you one month down the road and then you want to know, but yes, but what about today, God? What about today? What about today? So we know that Holy Spirit, you are going to tell him right now what to do. You're going to give him that knowledge, that wisdom that he needs from you, that counsel from you. Yes, Lord. That counsel from you, Lord God. Miss Leslie, hi there. Restoration with your daughter and oldest son. That's a relationship. Yes, absolutely. Yes. That God would, yes, absolutely heal their hearts. Draw them back into relationship with you. And I can't see the rest of that. It's Leslie Cantrell. We're trying to pull it up on another phone. I'm so sorry. But we know those relationships. It is always God's desire yes. that broken relationships be healed. Unless that person is dangerous for you. Okay? Even then it's God's will the relationship be restored. But only when that person um, is no longer dangerous to you. If it's involving danger. So I don't want somebody to go out there and try to restore a dangerous situation. But it is always, no matter what the relationship is, it's God's will that it be restored. But people have free will. They have free will to agree with what they want to agree with. And do what they want to do. Okay, here's another. Miss Leslie. Okay, yes. Miss Vicky, Single mothers. Mm. Not saved, but good mothers. I used to be one of those. Do you want to pray for them then? I those can. single moms, go ahead. Um, Father God, I ask that you lay these ha your hands, these hands, <laughs> your hands on yes. these single moms who are good mothers, but they don't know you. Um, I pray that they find you, that you yes. lead their hearts closer to you, that you show them that you are the best result out of any situation. I guess I'm saying that right. Yeah, yeah. Um, out of anything, and that if they are looking for a partner, that God will show them the right one. Yes, yes, that they will trust you, Lord God. They will trust you. Now, single moms, you know, I've been a single mom before, and I know what that's like. And I had Jesus. I, I can't imagine going down that journey without the Lord. So woo them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you. Uh, Marion, Marion Cosby. Mm, yes. My son is dealing with a serious anger issue from lifelong from okay. anger issue. Do you want to pray for that? Thank you, Lord. Father God, we lift up Marion's son, Father God, and we ask yes. Lord that the peace of God will come upon him, Lord. Lord, your Peace surpasses all understanding, God. Lord, yes. we pray, Lord, that you will um, that you will send Marion's son help, Lord God, to show him, yes. God, okay. how to be healed from the conditions of an angry heart, Lord. We just speak peace, Lord. May the peace of Jesus Give rest upon him, God. We thank you, Lord. Your peace, Lord. We speak peace to him you, in the name of Jesus, Lord. <coughs> thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Pastor That's Gerald, true. thank you for that blessing that you've spoken over us and the people here this evening. Thank you, Lord God. And Miss Figgy, thank you for our agreement. Um, Andrea? Yes. Cervical cancer stage four. Ooh, we call that null and void in, in Jesus', Jesus. Jesus' name. We refuse to come into agreement with what the doctors have said. We yes, actually God. speak against what the doctors have said. We curse yes. it at the root. We curse that diagnosis. Yes, Lord. That diagnosis is a lie. Your body's Jesus. symptoms are lying to you. They are lying. The word of God is truth. And the word of God says that your body, it's God's desire that as Jesus is in heaven, so are we in this earth. That's God's desire. Yes. If there's anybody, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit right now. Because sometimes a disease has nothing to do with unforgiveness. But if it does, 
Holy Spirit will remind you right now on the spot. Mm. You will have a remembrance of something or someone. Some person or an event will come across your mind. Glance at it, even if it's painful. And just because forgiveness is a choice, you don't have to feel it. Okay? And you just say, I forgive so-and-so. I forgive that situation. And whoever was at fault, if it was more than one person, quickly walk through that. And then we command those doors to be slammed shut that the enemy was trafficking from due to unforgiveness in your life. And they are null and void and no more in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Someone on here? No. There, your son has been dealing with serious anger issues all of his life. Well, we say that that assignment is null and void. In the name of Jesus. No more anger issues. That's what it was that's what it was called. And you know what? Miss Marion, I'm sure you are already doing this. But in case for some reason you haven't or maybe you stopped, maybe you gave up. I don't think that you're the kind of person who gives up. Speak the opposite of what you're seeing. Amen. In his life or in his behavior. And just say, "Nope." My son does not have any kind of anger issues of any kind. He is the most peaceful uh, man you can imagine. He is the most peaceful son. He always wants to get along with everybody. Amen. And that's what we speak over his life. We decree and declare it to be so. Yeah. Hey there, Miss Angela. Hey there. I have used to suffer from depression. Right. That's right. Thank you, Gavin. Gavin said that he used to suffer from depression. What? Yeah, I just wanted everyone to see you. Because you're a real so, person. Yes. So, he's our team that came with us this evening. We have, um, yes, you are. Vicki Rogers has yes. a niece that is also suffering with cancer. Okay. I'm not in, okay, touch with her. So, Lord God, I ask you to restore, number one, the relationship Amen. between niece and aunt. Yes, Father. We also say that cancer cannot live in her body. We say the blood of Jesus takes precedent over cancer and flushes it out. Just let a holy fire rush through her veins and her body right now. A cleansing fire. To eradicate every cancer cell in her body. Those cancer cells are rupturing and being miraculously and immediately replaced, if necessary, with healthy ones. But if they're there and they're not even supposed to be there and there shouldn't be any cell there, then null and void they are. Flushed out, burnt up in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Gavin, for agreeing with us. I actually do want to pray for... Um, one of my, well, there are a couple. My mm -hmm. friends, Anthony Richards and Sabrina Ellison. Okay. Um, Anthony, last year, the day after my birthday, lost his mother to uh, colon cancer. So, um, and they've been struggling with each other, I guess you could say. Struggling okay. with each other. Um, we he's speak been, peace to that relationship. Peace. Yeah. Peace. And he's been uh, struggling with, uh, well, I know... Both of them are struggling with a relationship with God, so if we all can just agree that they will find God <laughs> and find a good church for them. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Miss Angela, even. Same, Miss. <clears throat> Amen. Sorry, I'm rocking Xander. <laughs> you know, that's okay. That's the way it should be. That's your son. Huh? And, you know, a lot of times you can think, well, I'm a stay-at-home mom or I'm a mommy with small children and I can't benefit the kingdom of God. But Miss Brittany and her husband, Jonathan, came out, even though they have a young child, they were determined they're going to make a kingdom difference. Yes. And this is what she's doing this evening, rocking her baby, <laughs> loving on him, and yet she's still praying for other people's needs because she loves people. Her heart's desire is just to obey God. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Gerald, for coming into agreement. Yes. Restoration and healing. Amen. Amen. Increase faith, oh God. Yes, yes. yes. 
Thank you, Tammy, Miss Tammy. Hey there. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Tammy, for getting on here. And I know that recently you had a, um, I hope you don't mind me saying this. You can get me later. Um, you had a, a, a spot of skin cancer removed. And so we're just speaking to your body, your skin, from the inside out of your body, that you are whole. Amen. There is no cancer in your body or outside your body. Your lungs are functioning at better than 100%. Yes. You have 100% oxygen in your blood. Any issues, the enemy must give you sevenfold what he stole and double for your trouble. And I speak that on every single person who was on this feed, will be on this feed, or is on this feed right now, this Amen. Facebook Live. Amen. That you will get that sevenfold what Satan stole and double for your trouble. God's word does not lie. He said, if the thief, thief be found... He has to give back. And in two different parts in the Bible, one part it says four times what he stole. Mm. And the other place it says seven times. Mm -hmm. We know who the thief is mm -hmm. that came to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus told us that's Satan. And so he has to give you because mm -hmm. God is not a liar. God's arm is not too short. I want to increase somebody's faith right now. God is going to meet your need at your lowest point, whatever it is, whether it is the health, finances, or a relationship. God is meeting you where you are, Amen. where you are. It, there can be times I've been that way. I'm sure you have too, Shantae, yes. where we felt like we could not get to God. Mm -hmm. Like maybe we just couldn't push through in our worship, couldn't yeah. push through in anything. We were almost lethargic. I've been lethargic before and mm -hmm. couldn't lift my hands. And I'm just like, help. It's true. God, even Gavin. He's a teenager, and he said true. He, he, he's been there before. He knows what it feels like to just go. <sighs> God reached down. He reached down in mercy and love and touched us and pulled us up again. I'm telling you, he's doing that this evening, too. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Lambert, for receiving that. Was there another Thank prayer you. request? Um, that's all I have so far. Okay. If we missed your prayer request and you know, oh my goodness, you didn't pray for me, please type it again. Now, we are going to go back and look over this once this recording is done. If we don't get any more prayer requests um, or more testimonies. Because if you, if God has done something in your life, if he met a financial need, when he came through at the last minute, please list it on here so other people can read it. People need encouragement. I'm telling you. Okay. The other night, I got on here Friday evening. All of my purpose was to spend, you know, maybe less than three minutes to tell you that this evening was going to happen. And people immediately began to um, request, you know, what is God saying to me? And also, could you pray for this? People truly, oh, oh. Miss Andrea. My husband left for another woman. And he knows, oh, that you were sick. But he didn't care. He'd been gone for a year already. Oh. Man, that's... I'd rather have just a divorce. And the, oh. Mm. Honey, I can understand. That's cool. That's a polar bear. Well, you know what? That... People, we all make wrong choices. We've all been the party. I'm, I'm not taking up for his actions, okay? But I can say that we've all been the person that was victimized as well as the person doing the victimizing. Okay. Mm -hmm. On some level or another. On some level or another, we were the person getting harmed or the person harming. We've all done something wrong in our lives. So I just want to speak to you, Miss Andrea. Andrea, right now. That we're the wounds yes, of being rejected by a yes, husband. Lord. And I, I, I was rejected by my husband. He's passed on now. Mm -hmm. But I was rejected, honey. He was arrested for spouse abuse. And after two weeks, the judge said, you have to stay away for two weeks, but then you go home. Go home and um, be reconciled to your wife and just don't do that again. With all those children. And he decided he was not going to come home. He was going to be selfish. Mm -hmm. So I know what it's like to be rejected by the man that said he was going to love you and support you and take care of you. That he was going to be Jesus to you. And Jesus was willing to die for the church. He's willing to die for us. I know what it that's like to be rejected. So we ask God to go in right now and reach those rejected places. 
You're not a reject. I want to tell you that right now. And I'm sure you know that. But I just want to say it in case there's something. I'm speaking to something on the inside of you right now. The lie that the enemy planted. I stopped it. It's okay now. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. It was a prayer alarm. So that lie that the enemy planted in your soul, we speak to it to be unraveled, right now. to be brought to the surface, to be oh, diffused, yes, to be null and void, yes. to be plucked out as gently as God can do it, but completely uprooted. Because I know what that's like. Yes. And I just want to apologize to you. I don't know if anybody's ever done that before. I want to apologize to you for the things that were done wrong to you. Where you've had to financially deal with things on your own. To be alone. But you know what? In the natural, it may seem like you're alone. But God, your husband, Jesus. Jesus is your husband. And he has not left you or abandoned you. He's right there with you. The Bible says he holds us by our right hand. Mm. He's holding your hand. I'm telling you, if you were on this prayer feed, pray for Miss Andrea. Amen. Oh, pray for Miss Andrea. And I also want you to speak a word of forgive. I want you to forgive him because you may not feel like it right now. And maybe you think that you have. Your body is saying that there is an issue in the soul because it's not lined up. It's not. We're speaking that it's lined up. We're believing it's lined up now. But if for some reason you, God keeps or the Holy Spirit brings up any instance of different things that he's done or did to you, forgive him. I can speak from my own experience that when I forgave my ex-husband, it freed me out of a jail cell that I was in. And what was so interesting about unforgiveness is, unforgiveness is a cage that we ourselves walk up to. We do it. We walk up to a cage where the door is open. The door is open. We walk inside, shut it, lock it. We're holding the key in our hand. Yeah. The key is called forgiveness. Yeah. But we've locked ourselves in a cage called unforgiveness of our own free will <laughs> and said, and some of this I didn't realize I was doing until God showed me. And I said, I will not forgive that. Or I'll forgive that, but not that. That was too unforgivable. Who does that to a person? Okay. One of the reasons my baby died was because he did not pay the copay for me to have my C-section. Mm. That was. And I had prenatal insurance because he was required to keep insurance on me. Well, he dropped the insurance on me. He, he, pardon, the cert, what part do you call He dropped the prenatal on the insurance. He kept the insurance, but that made the copay go from a few hundred dollars to a few thousand. Several thousand, actually. I didn't have that kind of money. So, I had forgiven many things, and then God reminded me, but you never forgave that. And then, I'm telling you, me and God had it out, honey. We had it out because I'm like, that's murder. That's this. That's this. And then I remember God showing me the different things I had done in life when I thought. How many times did I think or wish he was dead? I committed the same crime he did, except I didn't do it outright. But it was because Jesus says, if you think it in your, think it in your heart, you've done it already. Same sin. People have different consequences for it. I didn't go out and up, walk up somebody and kill them. But Jesus says I sinned the same way. My sin was just as guilty as his. Mm -hmm. So I had to choose to take that key of forgiveness, stick it in the lock, and I jumped out of that cage. I'm telling you, honey, once I jumped out, I was like, God, don't ever let me back in that cage again. Don't ever Amen. do something. Throw up a, a, a barricade so I can't get back into unforgiveness ever again. I love you, Miss Andrea, and I just know that God has healed your heart, is healing it. It's a continuous process throughout our lives, but more layers, they keep coming off. They are falling off of you. Is there Amen. another? That was just have a lot of people agreeing with Miss Andrea. Thank y'all for agreeing, for healing. Thank you. Thank you so much. We just appreciate you all this evening. Amen. Amen. If there's nothing else, we're gonna get off here. We're gonna jump off here. If you have a testimony that you believe will encourage someone, or you want to ask a question. 
you're more than welcome to ask that. But I know everybody here, you know, we're at some point, we're all going to go home. <laughs> but we just enjoy the privilege that you would trust us to pray for you and to speak into your lives. Thank y'all so much. Mm -hmm. And we just know God's love is yes. extending to you in peace, whatever home you're in right now. Your home or somebody else's home. That his love and peace are reaching you. And yes. you'll have the best night's sleep that you have ever had. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. And we love you. We love you. Bye. 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 Gavin, you want to wait? Bye. So. <laughs> I love teenagers. <laughs>